Hey guys, I hope you're all doing great. It's Jane once again. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another perfume video. If you're new here, welcome and thank you for clicking on this thumbnail. This channel is all about fragrances. If you're interested in fragrance-related content, please head on down below. Click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And please, please thumbs up this video so I know you like my content. Today's video is a comparison of this insanely popular award-winning floral mask perfume for women from American Cuban designer Narcisa Rodriguez. Probably one of the most, if not the most popular fragrance from the line, Narcisa Rodriguez for her. And today, we will be comparing the original Eau de Toilette versus the later Eau de Parfum version. Full review is coming right up. Unlike other fragrances where sometimes the difference on the bottle is a simple inscription or a slight change in color of the different versions, the Narcissa for hers are literally black and pink different. The Eau de Toilette comes in a black opaque bottle, the Eau de Parfum in soft pink opaque bottle. But here is where the confusion comes. Before you get to see the bottle, you see the box. And intuitively, you think that the pink box contains the pink Eau de Parfum and the black box contains the black Eau de Toilette. Well, what do you know? Narcissa Rodriguez switched them up. For what reason, I do not know. But it is definitely confusing. The pink box, in fact, contains the black Eau de Toilette and the black box contains the pink Eau de Parfum. There is an inscription on the box that says quote-unquote Eau de Toilette and quote-unquote Eau de Parfum but a lot of us do not check or double-check. We go by color, memory, and intuition. Ultimately, picking up or may pick up the wrong version. Well, let me know down in the comments if this has ever happened to you. They both come in 30, 50, and 100 ml bottles. For Her Eau de Toilette was released in 2003. For Her Eau de Parfum was released three years later in 2006. The perfumers are Christine Agel and Francisco de Jan for both versions. Showing you the note breakdown, the top notes are totally different but in the same fruity floral note categories. The Eau de Toilette having orange blossom, osmanthus, and bergamot. The Eau de Parfum has rose and peach. The middle notes are the same mask and amber for both. In the base, both have patchouli with vanilla and vetiver in the Eau de Toilette and sandalwood in the Eau de Parfum. These are Fragrantica listings of the main accords picked up by Fragrantica users and reviewers. The stark difference I can see is the rose accord present in the pink Eau de Parfum which makes sense because rose was added to this version and the notable absence of the citrus accord on it because again, in the top, it has peach instead of orange blossom, osmanthus, and bergamot. Personally, apart from the stronger rose presence in the Eau de Parfum, these differences are very subtle. You'd only really notice it if you try hard enough. The Eau de Toilette is a tad fresher and clean smelling to my nose but it's also sharper in the opening which kind of puts me off a little bit. I assume it is the orange blossom plus the bergamot on top. Citruses can have a little sharpness there. The Eau de Parfum, on the other hand, is straight up rosy and powdery soft on initial spray. And this rose pretty much stays on until the dry down. I do not get much fruity freshness from the Eau de Parfum as well. And uh, Eau de Toilette has more of fresh fruitiness that stays on a little bit longer too. The middle is pretty much your warm, ambery mask, cocooning and comforting powdery and clean. They both have the so-called signature Narciso mask known to most people in the community. As they dry down, the Eau de Parfum retains the soapy clean rose plus the creamy powderiness characteristic of sandalwood while the Eau de Toilette retains that soapy clean vibe yet powdery musky sweet at the same time. A tad sweeter than in the opening. They pretty much approach a point where you can't tell them apart. The deep dry down blends perfectly well with your skin. It smells like clean skin to me or something like your skin but better kind of perfume. Oh and the patchouli is not too prominent or headache inducing to me. I think it serves to round out this fragrance and of course to improve lasting power as both of these are really really long lasting on me. It goes without saying that these are definite feminine fragrances. These are both called for her after all. The way the mask is done in here is something that a woman would enjoy more. The sweetness, although not candy, sugary, or vanilla will definitely vibe with a woman's taste. 
in terms of projection and sillage, even though these are softer smelling musky fragrances, I find that both the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette have moderate to strong projection and sillage that stays on very long. I didn't think this to be true of the even softer Eau de Parfum since it smells more delicate, but I was wrong given the same number of sprays, they behave the same on me. They project and they leave a wonderful trail behind Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. These are a whole day fragrances on me. Although much softer after the 5th to 6th hour mark, they are really still present through the course uh, of the day, not as projecting as when newly sprayed. I overspray more often than not, of course, so please bear that in mind. On US websites, the 50ml or the toilette goes for 85 US dollars. That's 4,900 Philippine pesos at Rustans locally. And 100ml for 112 US dollars. That's 6,600 pesos. I couldn't find the price of the 30ml or the toilette. The other perfume is definitely more expensive as the 50ml sells for 103 US dollars. That's 5,500 pesos. And the uh, 131 uh, US dollars, that's 7,000 pesos for the 100 ml Eau de Parfum. I couldn't find the price of the 30 ml Eau de Parfum in USD, but locally it retails for 3,600 Philippine pesos. That's Rustan's department store price. The pricing to me is perfectly, perfectly reasonable. Both of these are perfect for local tropical weather, a comfortable scent in the heat and humidity of warmer months, and a comforting scent during the rainy monsoon season of our climate. Perfect year-round perfume, signature scent worthy, whole day wear, office fragrance for daytime, casual, or semi-formal and formal events. Great for job interviews, great for you guys whose job involves dealing with or serving a lot of people as these are inoffensive but nevertheless pleasant and clean smelling. This won't bother anyone, great for daytime wear mostly but can also be a great fragrance to wear to bed or after shower. Women of all ages can wear this. Okay, maybe not teenagers. I don't think teenage girls will vibe with this scent profile yet, but definitely 20s and beyond. This is an easy reach, no need to think twice kind of perfume to me. The most popular dupe I've heard of and read about is Sarah Jessica Parker's Lovely, which I've surprisingly never smelled before, honestly. What I can recommend as an alternative is Replica's Lazy Sunday Morning, which smells in between the clean musky rosy eau de parfum and the clean soapy musky eau de toilette. If you have that, no need for either of this and vice versa. Another so-called dupe or smell alike is Zara Bright Rose minus the longevity. I will link related videos in the description box down below if you're interested to know more. I can go with both to be perfectly honest, but if I have to really, really choose, it would be the pink Eau de Parfum version. Even if this is pricier for an almost similar scent profile and performance, to me, the extra penny and the price difference is justified. I will definitely pay extra for this. Number one, this is lovelier on my skin when compared side by side. The middle to the dry down of this is perfection. The Eau de Toilette, although very, very, very similar, does not stand out much on me. Maybe it's the rose. The Eau de Parfum just smells way better the longer this stays on me. Number two, I know it may just be me, but I am somehow put off by the opening on the or the toilette block bottle version, just the very opening. Something about it is quite screechy and less refined to me. Not that it matters very much, but just a little nuance I'd rather not choose to overlook. But do know that it settles down after a while. My big disclaimer is that this is all me and my personal preferences. I know so many love the original and is in a lot of people's top 10 for life. I for one am choosing the Eau de Parfum for the subtleties that it brings, not for a real deal breaker kind of reason, just a matter of preference. Honestly, either one of these would do. If you love the smell of rose scented perfumes, go for the pink Eau de Parfum. If you'd rather have a clean white floral, slightly brighter feel, go for the black Eau de Toilette. Again, the differences is not like night and day. They are more subtle than you think they are. I don't think you need to own both, but you need to own at least one of this, in my honest opinion. If you're starting a fragrance collection, Narcisa Rodriguez for her Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum should be one to own, especially if you live somewhere tropical or hot most months of the year. Either of these should be in every aspiring perfumista's starter kit. These are good perfumes to start your appreciation of feminine floral masks and musky perfumes in general. These are fairly simple, basic scent composition that's not going to overwhelm 
from you and the people around you who can smell you. Great to give as gifts as well. These are bong for your buck. Versatile, affordable, inoffensive, great projectors, wonderful performance, only good things to say about these perfumes. I don't think there's a single letdown to both of these. FYI though, I do not currently own a bottle of either of this. I have a handful of samples that I get for free from purchase and I've been living on this. So I keep putting off purchasing a full bottle for myself. The juice is potent that I don't need to spray so much to enjoy the full experience. I however gifted the pink bottle to my mom for Mother's Day and it was an instant love for her. The Eau de Toilette is a 9 over 10 to me. The Eau de Parfum is a 9.5 over 10 for the reasons I stated earlier. Totally full bottle worthy and definitely a must own. Blind buy only if you're one to enjoy clean powdery masks. I had my reservations initially because I'm not one to enjoy powdery scents so much but these are the fluffy musky airy pleasant ones so it's the kind that almost anyone will enjoy all right you guys i hope you found this video useful for deciding which narciso rodriguez for her to get thank you for making it this far and if you enjoyed this content send me some love by clicking any button below like share subscribe and be notified i'm truly grateful to you all and grateful for your continued support stay safe smell your absolute best and i will see you all in my next video bye